Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to uh, see how can we work with uh, files in Python. So how to work with file input output operations. This is something that we are going to study today. So these are the objectives of today's lecture. So we'll study uh, how to use text, CSV or binary files. How to save data to these files. How to retrieve the data that's saved inside these files. Uh, we'll know what is the difference between text and binary files. Uh, we'll see the benefit of using with statement for opening and closing a file. Uh, we'll also study the CSV module, the writer objects, the reader objects for writing uh, lists uh, inside CSV file and for reading lists from CSV file. We'll also study the use of pickle module for load and dump methods for you know binary files. So all of this we are going to study in today's lecture. Uh, so uh, normally, you know, when we deal with files in Python, there are a lot of files that we can deal with. There are three kind of popular files that we'll be working with uh, in this particular uh, lecture. The text files, binary files and CSV files. Text files you probably would already know, you would have worked with it. Uh, it has a .txt uh, extension and it is used to uh, store the text data. So for example, you can you know write down uh, any data inside a text file using a notepad or notepad++ or any other text editor. So this is an example of a text file actually. This is a, a, in fact a, a CSV file. You could see CSV here. But CSV is quite similar to text. So that's why you know it is shown an example uh, as an example of a text file. So text file looks like similar which has a lot of text inside the, you know, inside the file. So this is called what? This is called the text file. Now the text file stores everything in the form of a text. So even if there are numbers here, those numbers are stored also in the form of text. So that means everything inside the text file that is a string. So normally a text file is used to store only text. So that is why it is called a text file. Then you have the binary file. The extension of a text file is .txt or .txt. An extension of a binary file is a, a dot bin or dot dat as well. So you might have seen these files, uh, you know, whenever you are installing any new program. So in the directories, uh, you might have seen the bin files or dat files. So this uh, bin file is basically what that is a binary file. So binary file is also used to store data, but uh, uh, it can actually store other kind of data as well, other than you know text data. It can store uh, integer data, flow data. It can also save, uh, you know, data related to images or videos as well. So all of that could be stored in in uh, binary files. So you could see, for example, we have a text uh, uh, file which is actually a CSV file here, and we have three lines here, and there is some information written inside this file, and then the same data is now shown in the form of a binary file. So you could see some of the data is actually the same, but some other data has been, uh, you know, uh, as looks like a garbage kind of data. This is how the data is actually, you know, saved inside a uh, binary file. So uh, yeah, initially we have some header information here, then the name of the movie here, it is same name here. Then year has been changed into something else. We have some other information. Then we have the name of the uh, second movie here. So all of the data here actually is in, in one line here. It was in three lines. So this is an example of a binary file and this is an example of a text file having the same data. So as I said, the text file saves only the text data. The binary file is used to save not only the textual data but the integer floats, the data related to images, videos, all of the data could be stored in binary files. Okay, so whenever you apply any kind of operations on file there are three steps that you always have to do so these are the three, three steps first you have to open the file then you write data to the file or you read data from the file uh, and at the end you have to close the file so when you are working on files inside python as well so you have to do all of these operations first open the file then write data to the file or read data and then you have to close the file now uh, for opening the file, you don't actually uh, literally open the file that you normally do. For example, you won't see your file open like this. So you basically write a command which virtually opens the file 
and after that anything uh, you want to write you will use some commands to write and all the data would be written inside the file and after that you will simply close the file and then you can you know go there and manually open the file you would see that data actually has been written inside the file but these are the sequence of operations opening the file writing or reading data from the file and then closing the file so first uh, the, 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 these are the uh, these are the commands that you use for opening or closing the file so first you write open the name of the file the mode mode here means that whether it is write mode read mode or any other mode and uh, uh, after that you doing any uh, any operation that you want to do whether reading or writing you do all of that and then at the end you do what you close your file so open file here you specify the name of the file if your file is in the current directory you directly would write down the name of the file if your file is in some other directory then you have to write down the full path of the file from where you want to open the file then you write down your mode now your mode uh, could be the read mode write mode append mode or binary mode the read mode tells the compiler that you are going to read the contents of the file so when you use a read mode the file must already be present there if the file doesn't exist and you are trying to read it will give you error that the file does not exist to write data inside the file you write down you know, this mode which is w that means you want to write data for writing the file does not have to exist if the file exists the write mode will open the file and write data to the file and if the file uh, already exists then in that case it would still open the file and write data to the file then you have a which uh, which is for appending the data to the file now write and append are different both are used for writing the data but they, 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 they behave differently so when you use w for writing the data then it always removes all the data that may already be present in the file and would start from the first line and will write all the data there so let's suppose if you already have a file and there is some data and you want to add data then you don't use the write mode because if you use the write mode it will remove all the data and it will start writing from the beginning of the file so if you want to add data then you will use the append mode if you for example want to remove the previous data or let's suppose if, if it is the first time you are you know going to write inside the file then in that case you can either use w or append uh, both would be okay because there is no data already there so that means even if you use write mode you are not going to lose any data so you can use the write mode or append mode the last one is binary so this is used for binary files so when you are dealing with binary files so after applying uh, any of these operations whether whether writing or reading or appending uh, you do what you close your file so this is an example that is given here so first you write open then the name of the file it is a text file so I have written test.txe it is in quotes uh, uh, because uh, we have to specify the name in quotes then you have comma then the mode here the mode is write mode so that means you want to write something so in this case if the file exists it is okay if the file does not exist even then it is okay it will create the file first and then write the data okay so before open you have to write down the variable this is actually called an object so here out file is an object which is uh, basically handling uh, your file so when you write open test.txt in write mode so you before that you write this object this object is used for handling all the operations related to this particular file which has been opened then you write on this uh, particular object and then any command that you want to do for example you want to write the data out file dot write then whatever data you want to write it has to be a text data so it must be in quotes if uh, it is not text then you have to convert that into text using str then out, full, out, out file dot close so after writing the data you have to close the file now why it is important to close the file if you do not close the file then this particular object that you have created for handling the file that object actually uses some resources from the operating system so if you do not uh, close the file then uh, this object would still be there and it would still be using the resources uh, of the operating system so you don't want to do that so you want to release all these resources once you are done with your file operations so that is why it is important to close your file after you are done with all the operation 
so if your file is in the same directory then it will open otherwise it will give you error but as I said if you are writing then in that case it doesn't really matter whether it is there or not in that case it will simply create the file if it does not exist if the file is in another directory then full path must be given if a file is open to read then it must be there in the specified file path if the file is open to write then if it, it is it is open if it exists otherwise it is created first and automatically by open command and then uh, it is open for the writing so we can actually try this so this is my file so I have copied this code here if I run this code so you see here that it is executed so it is showing me it is executed so nothing is in the output so that means it has actually opened a test.txt file and it must be in this directory the, the, the address that is shown here in this directory it must be there and uh, it I am writing test inside the file and after that I am closing the file so I can you know check whether that file has been created or not so here instead of python files I can select text files because I have created text file so the name of my text file is test so I can open it so you could see here this file has been opened and what is written inside the file test now I can write something else for example I am testing again now in this case since I am using the write mode so that means it will open it again and since I am writing again so it will not append the data it will remove the previous data the previous data was test so let us see if I, we execute this then what do we get so open your file text files test and it is written I am testing again so this data has been written inside the file the previous data has been removed so if you want to append the data then you have to use what then you have to use the A mode that is append mode so if I write here for example A that is append mode I am testing for second time if I run it again and if I open it so you see here that now I have written I am testing again and then after that I am testing for the second time so the data has been appended just after the that data if you want the data to be written uh, on the next line then you can actually write down here before I slash n so that means this data will not be written on the same line this data would be written on the next line when it is appended to the existing data so this way you can write the data to a file okay so there are two ways actually to open the file or close the file one way we have just you know uh, we have seen here you open the file you uh, have an object before open and then you use that object to write a read and after that you do what you uh, basically close the file the other way which is actually better way to do uh, to do uh, file operation is using the uh, with statement so with statement could also be used to open the files and, and, and do all the operations the, the there are two advantages of using open the advantage of using uh, there are two advantages of using the with statement the advantage of using the with statement is one when you use the with statement you don't have to manually close the file after your uh, uh, program is compiled the file is automatically closed so for example if you don't use with so you have to manually close by writing out file dot close but in the case of uh, with you don't have to close the file at the end it will automatically close once you are done with your code the second advantage is that uh, uh, in the case of uh, in the case of this kind of syntax let's suppose you open your file and do you are doing some operation for example writing or doing something and during these commands suppose you do something which causes an exception or causes an error in that case what will happen if the for example there is an error in the second line your file is already open and you got an error in the second line then in that case the third line will not be executed so that means the file will not be closed so that uh, particular object that you created it will be still in the operating system it will still be using the resources so in that case uh, it is uh, 
it was it is it is it is not actually memory efficient because you are still utilizing some of the resources which you would not be actually should not be using because your program did not compile now in the case of with when you use with even if there is an error in the code before finishing all of your code even if there is error the with automatically closes your file whenever the error occurs even at that time so that means the resources would automatically be released so that is why it is preferred to use the uh, with to actually do all the file operations rather than using the previous syntax so how do we use with first you write on the with then open file mode as and here you write on the file object so previously you were writing open file and mode and before that you were writing the object now you write with here and the object at the end after the as and then you write on all your code here for example um, this is a similar exactly the same uh, code that we did earlier using the previous method with open test.txt in the right mode as out file out file dot write test so here you are writing test inside the file and after that you don't have to do what you don't have to uh, close the file because with will automatically close it so let us uh, try to do it again so if I compile it now I can open the file again it is the same file test.txt so again test is written inside the file now to read the contents from the file I have to use the R mode with open test.txt read mode here as in file so you can use any object name here print in file dot read line so here I am reading the line and also while reading it I am printing the line as well so whatever line that has been read that is going to be printed as well so Now if your uh, file in which you are writing, if it is already open, you will not see the changes that, is hap that are happening. So you have to close the file and open again to see uh, the changes have uh, taken place. So you see here, test is printed. So here what it is doing, it is opening the file, then it is reading the line. There was only one line, which line? Test. So it is uh, reading that line and then it is printing the line on the Python, con uh, Python shell. So the right uh, method, this is the right method, so we already have actually used it. So uh, for example, let us see an example with open members.txt. So here we have a different file here in the right mode as file, file.write, john, please, and then we are ending it with slash n. Why? So that whatever we write next time inside this file, that would be written where? That would be written on the new line and not on the same line so let us try to execute it so it is executed if I open the members.txt file because the name was members if I open it so you see John please has been written now if I execute the second uh, in a code here which was uh, this so now it is writing what eric idle slash n now if i write this so i already have written something so if i write this what will happen in this case it will actually overwrite the previous data why because you are opening the file again and uh, okay since i am appending it if you write w here instead of a then it will remove all the previous data and write on the error card but if I write a here that means I'm I'm going to append the data then in that case what will happen it will write the data uh, and will not remove the previous data so let us open and since previously when I wrote what after writing John please I had ended it with slash n so that means now this must be written on the new line because the previous data when I wrote it although we were not able to see the slash n because uh, when we open the file in the text mode you don't really see slash n there 
but uh, slash and I was actually there so that you could see here the next data is actually written on the new line and similarly now if I append some more data since Eric idle had been ended previously with slash n so slash n is actually there uh, in the actual code of this text file so that means whatever you write the new data that will be written on the new line in this particular case okay so if I want to uh, in this case I have to open the file two times so I can actually do the same thing uh, in a different way so that suppose if I copy all of this so if I can remove this line so in this case what we are doing first we are opening the file in the write mode we are writing something then we are opening the file in append mode and we are appending something so that means the previous data will not be rushed now in this case actually I don't need to if, if I'm writing inside one particular file all the code I don't need to open the file again so for example I already have opened the file in the write mode I can write one line then I can write the second line so I don't need to open the file again because the file is already open once I have written everything after that I can simply do what uh, uh, the, when the code finishes uh, with command will automatically close your file so let us try to open the file so you see here the same data has been written here so you can actually write all the commands inside one as well so once you have opened the file and then you are writing inside the file then in that case the data is not uh, you know overwritten the data would be overwritten only when you have opened the file you write something and then you open the file again in the write mode so then the previous data would would be lost but in this case since the file is already open so the data will not be lost so if you want to write integer or float that could also be written but that must be converted into string first because we are dealing with the text file so text files uh, can only deal with the text textual data so that means you have to convert that into string you cannot use integer or float data so these are actually the contents of the actual file when you write down the two lines so John Cleese slash n error card slash n so this is what is actually stored in the file but when you actually open the text file this is how you view the slash n is basically taken as the new line so that is why you go to the new line and you don't actually see the slash n when you actually open the file but the actual code that is saved inside the file the, the, this is the actual this is the actual text these, these are the actual contents of the file okay to read the uh, data from the file there are three different kind of methods you have the read method the read method reads all the contents of the file as one string so if there are multiple lines five lines ten lines all of those would be uh, read as one single string read lines it re reads all the lines but all the lines are basically read as multi-line list so that means uh, the first line is basically the first item of the list the second line would be the second item of the list so that way if you want to access you know line by line or uh, uh, then you can use what you can use read lines where uh, all the lines are basically read into one particular list and then you can you know uh, access each particular line by using the indexing of the list read line this only reads one line from the string so for example if you are using uh, uh, if you just want to read one line at a time so then you can use what you can use the read line method so let's see few examples with open members.txt as file so here we see here you see that we did not specify any mode here by default if you do not specify any mode then the mode is read mode so when you open uh, the file uh, without specifying the mode so that means it is read mode now in this case when you are trying to read the file the file must exist otherwise it will give you error so since we already have uh, created members.txt file so that means we can use it and then we can use the for loop to actually go through the line so in this case we are not actually using any of these methods here so you can actually use the for loop as well to read the contents of the file line by line so for example you can write here for line in file line is a variable you can use any variable here file file here is the object of this particular file that you create 
So for line in file, head line would read first the first line from the file. Then you can print the line, and then why we are writing end is equal to uh, you know double quotes here why when you read the line so you already know the contents of the line for example these are the contents so when you read the line it will actually read the first line here the first line from here and uh, until slash n it will read this line now since this particular line ends with what with slash n so that means when you read this line and try to print it then slash n would automatically be executed now by default when you print something after printing also uh, you know you automatically go to the new line so in this case if you do not write end here after printing one line it will not go to the next line it will actually go uh, to uh, it will skip one line and go to the third line the reason is you will have two slash n's one slash n which you have read from the line which already has slash n one from the print because whenever you print after printing you always go to the new line so that means this print will move you to the new line and line also has slash n so that will also move to the new line so that is why instead of going to the second line you will actually go to the third line so when I write end is equal to this that means the print which normally ends with slash n now it will not end with slash n and this one already had slash n so that means this will have slash n so you will actually have only uh, one space here so let us uh, try to execute this so you see here that it first print John's please Eric Idle and then we have space here why because uh, we had a print here now if I remove this and here so then I said it will remove that will actually read the contents of the line line has a slash n and print also moves to the new line so then you will have two spaces here so you see John please and it actually ended with slash n so that means you had to move to the new line then print also moves to the new line so that is why you actually go here and then you have another extra space here the last space is because of the last print that you actually have here okay you can also use the uh, read command with open members.txt as file contents is equal to file.read so what does read do we already have seen read reads all the contents as one string so then you can simply you print the contents so we can execute this as well so you see you get the contents here ok why do we have a space here because Eric Idle also was ending with the uh, slash n so that is why we have extra space here okay you can also read the entire file as a list so we already have seen for uh, using uh, uh, for reading the contents as a list we have to use what read lines so with open members.txt as file members is equal to file dot read lines so here we are reading the contents of this particular file since you are using read lines so that means the contents are read as a list and these contents which we are reading we are saving into this particular list the name of the list is members then member 0 will have the contents of the first line members 1 will have the contents of the second line and again we are ending with this otherwise you know print will move to the new line and uh, first line which is John Cleese also has slash n so you will have two spaces if you do not write end here So John Cleese had a cardinal and then you have space here here the space is actually because of this second line members one so when you read the uh, second line second line was what that was Eric Idle so after Eric Idle you also have slash n so since you do not write end is equal to this so that is why you actually had uh, an extra space there so we can actually try to remove try to have that end here so end is equal to for example I can have double quotes here so we can now executed you see that the space is removed now now we can also read the each line as well so we can write for example with open members.txt as file member1 is equal to file dot read line so it will read only one line and uh, then you can print the first line 
then it reads the second line so next time when you use, use the read line next time it is automatically going to read the next line so this could also be used here to read the contents of the line so this is this read line is actually similar kind of syntax which for uses for example for loop you saw that for loop first uh, reads first line the next time for loop runs it reads the next line so for loop is actually using this kind of syntax which is same as read line so you could see john quickies are cardinal again extra space here so that extra space is because when you print member 2 you did not end it with this so if you write end here so then you will not have this extra space here okay so now we have an example how to write the items from a list inside a file because normally we when we deal with databases so we have a lot of data so we have the data uh, in some kind of list then and then after reading the data we actually write the data back to the files now why do we write the data to the files from the list you already know if you are working with the list that's where you take data from the user and you do something we did a this kind of example previously when we were doing the movie program using list so let's suppose if the user enters a new movie and uh, the data will be added to the list but once you close the program that data is lost and you start from the beginning again every time you open your program and run it we, which we do not want to so we want if for example if the contents are new contents are added next time when you open the program those contents should be there so by default when you're working all the data that you're working with that is in the ram so if you close the program that data is lost so you have to save that data into the hard disk so that next time when you actually read the data the data is still there so that is why what we do is when we deal with the uh, list so what do we do uh, we actually save the data from the list inside the file so data is permanently saved so next time when you actually use the program you can read your data from the files again and data will not be lost so let's see how can we read the data uh, how can you write the data from the list into the file or how can you uh, read the data from the file into the list okay, let us try to see first the right uh, right uh, how to write the data from list to a file so let's suppose this is our list so there are two uh, items here john cleese and anarchidol with open members are txt in the right mode we are using the for loop to write the data for m in members so we are uh, basically uh, going through the list first time the value of m would be the first item which is john cleese and we are writing file dot write so we are writing m what is m here first time m would be john cleese plus slash n because we want to end jad cleese with slash n so that next time the next data is written on the new line so this is used for adding the new line then next time m would be arachidal so then it will write the data to the uh, file and after that it will automatically end so you can actually write the data so it is executed let's open the file the file was uh, members.txt so the data is written here so this is how you actually write the data now to read the lines from the file into a list so you can first create an empty list and then you can read the data and keep on adding to this particular list so with the open members.txt as file so by default it is a read mode for line in file here line would read one line from the file so what do you do line dot replace okay you already have read the first line now so one thing is you can directly append, append this line into the uh, you know into the uh, list the problem here is when you read the data from the uh, file so slash n is all also there after every name so for example you have john cleese then slash n error guidel then slash n and when you read the data and you want to add back to the list so you don't want to read the slash n so you can actually replace the slash n with something else for example with empty string so first you read the line first line then you write down line dot replace what do you want to replace you want to replace slash n with what with empty space uh, in fact there is no space with empty just uh, an empty string and you save back it into the line then you append that line where into the members and then you will you know keep on doing that for the next line so then it will read eric idle after eric idle above you have slash n again so then again it will replace the slash n with uh, just an empty string 
and then it will append it to the this particular list and after that we can simply print that particular list so let us try to see it so you see that it is printing the contents of the list Now, so far we have been writing on the textual data in a text file. So we may also have to write a um, integer data into a file. To write the integer data into a file, we have to convert the data into a string because text file can only take string data or textual data. So let's see how can we do, do that. So suppose we have this, uh, uh, this particular list which has uh, uh, integer values. We want to write this data into a file with open gs.txt in write mode and this is the file object for year in years so we are getting one year from this particular list years file so this is the file object dot write string year so we have to convert the year into a string otherwise it will give you error then we can add slash n as well so that every time the data is written it is written on the new line so let us try to compile this so just remember for the uh, integer data you have to convert that into a string whenever you want to write the data into a text file so the data has been written the name of the file was years so let us try to see text files so you see that uh, this data has been written 1975 79 and 83 and this was the data that we were actually writing then to read the contents so similar way first you create a list and then you open the file in the read mode you read first line you replace the line for slash n uh, with the empty string but remember in this case when you are appending it this data that you are reading this is a string this is not an integer so you have to convert that into integer yourself by using the int here otherwise if you append it it will, it will be appended but it will be taken as what it will be taken as string so it will not be printing like this you will have double quotes here so that means it will be what it will be a string data like this here so here you had you know quotes here so that means this was a textual data so similarly here if you do not write int here so that means the data would be read but it will be read in the, in, in the form of a text okay let us now try to do the movie list uh, program again that we already have done but now we will do that using what using files so we actually have the same uh, uh, same menu so first the title here command menu list add del exit list is used for listing all the movies add for adding a movie del for deleting a movie exit for exiting the program so it is asking for us uh, asking for the command if I write down list it lists all the movies command add it asks me for the movie name and it asks it, it adds the movie then list again then you could see the movie has been added then del it asks me for the number of the movie and I provide the number 4 and it removes the movie and then you can exit so let's see how can we do that so the code is quite similar actually but uh, now we will be using what we will be using the file now the file we are using is movies.txt so this is the file name so let us first go to the main function so here main function is uh, uh, quite similar to what we already did the previously in the list display menu so it will display the menu movies is equal to read movies so it is calling the read movies function so that means initially when the main function is called all the movies would be read and will be saved into this particular list movies so that means while you are working you can always add the movie into the movies and you can always uh, uh, and you can always uh, you know remove the data from this particular list as well so that means all the data would always be in this list and when you leave your program you can always write back all the data back to your file so first it is reading the movies so let's see how can it read the movies so this is read movies so first it uh, creates an empty list with open file name so here file name was movies.txt so it will open this file it is read mode because we did not specify any mode as file for line in file line is equal to line dot replace so exactly the same syntax we already had done it reads the file replaces slash n with the empty string and then it does what it 
appends the line back to the movies. So that means all the data would be read, uh, read and that data would be where inside the list. We will not have any slash and there. Now in this case we are simply adding or appending the data. Why? Because the name of the all movies they are actually string. So that means there is no uh, integer here so you don't have to convert that into a string. So it appends the data and it returns the movies which is what? Which is your list. And this is how you get your list. So after reading you get the data of all the movies in this particular uh, in this particular list. Then we have a loop here, command, you get the command from the user, if command is list, so you have to list the movies. So you simply command uh, what, so list movies, movies. So you already have all the data inside the movies, which is a list, so simply list all the movies. So since this is a list, so that means the previous code would work, the one you already have done for the list. So let's go to list movies. Uh, so this is list movies for i in range movie la length of movies so you start from zero and you go to length of movies you get one movie uh, you write you know string i plus one why i here why, uh, because uh, you have to write down the number of the movie as well why i plus one because i initially would be zero but movie number is starting from one so zero plus one first it will be one next two and then you simply write down the name of the movie so this code is actually the same code that we already have done for list why because you already have read the contents of all the movies from the file inside a list so that means when you have to list all the movies so you can use the previous uh, code why because you already have the data inside a list then for adding again you want to add the movie now to add the movie you will again be adding to where you will be adding to the that particular what that particular uh, uh, that particular list that you have so let's go to add movie so this is the add movie command so first you do what movie is equal to input movie you get the movie from the user you append it so you already have the data now inside what inside the uh, inside your uh, movies list and now you also want to update your file so you simply call which command write movies movie so you are calling this particular function write movies which is responsible for writing all the movies data back to the file and you simply tell the user that the movie has been added. So when you add the movie, you simply get the data from the user for the new movie. You add that data to your list and then you write back your list back to the file. And then you tell the user that it has been added. So since it is using write movies, so we will also see how can we use write movies. So this is the write movies uh, uh, function. So you are opening the file in the write mode. For, so you are opening the file in the right mode so you are not appending data why because you have all the data in the list again so that means you can write whole list uh, again so you don't need to write the individual line only so you can write back all the list again so you write far movie in movies file or write movie so you read one movie first then append slash and the next movie and then you will keep on adding all the movies so this way the data would be written back to the uh, file again then to delete so you simply have to delete a movie so it calls delete movie function so after deleting you can actually write back the data back to the file again so that means the data would be updated so let's go to delete movie so this is delete movie first you get the index then you remove the movie movie dot pop index minus one and then you write back the list again so that means after removing the data would be updated again and then you print that this movie was deleted and this is your display menu function and if the person says exit, so you simply do what? You simply exit. So in this case, you could see that, you know, uh, it is quite similar to the previous one. But now, every time you take the new movie data, you append it to the list and you write back to the movie. Every time you delete the data, you delete it from the list and you also write back the data back to the, uh, back to the file again. So that means write movies is actually the uh, main important function here which is responsible for writing back the data every time there is a change and for reading the data reading data you always read at the beginning before you know starting your program here now in this case you could see that we did not add any data in your file at, at all so that means the data of the first three movies that should always be there so initially when you write your program you have to create a file which file movies.txt because you are reading the data from this movie straight away 
so that means this file must be there and this file must have you know all the data as well this these three movies so let us uh, before executing that program let us first create that file so let me see if I already have that file so this is movies so I actually have already you know a few names are already written there so just to add a few I'll remove the first few names so I have written Tom and Jerry, Pink Panther so these movies are already there ok so let us copy this code so let us try to execute it so some extra spaces here so it is working so first I'll list it so it gives me you know all the names here ok so it is printing 3 as well why does it print 3 so let us see in the actual code ok I'll sort it out later but uh, ok because the data was already there so I already removed it so uh, I removed the lines but the new line was already there so I think that is why it is going to the new line third line ok so let me try to add uh, something here so if I add something, let's suppose if I add transformer. So it says transformer was added. So if I list it, you see here transformer. The third one actually because I have removed some data from there. So I think the new line was already there. So let me try to you know do it again by removing all the data and by adding the new data. So if I exit it. Okay, I, I have changed uh, that uh, particular uh, uh, file, so I have added uh, you know the movies, the same movies that were there in our program. So let us try to run it again. So it is asking uh, for a command. So let me list it. So these are the movies. Previously we had an empty space because uh, when I removed the movies, so I left one empty space there. So that is why it was considering that to be movie as well. So I have three movies here. If I add something. So suppose transformer. So this is added. So if I list again, so you see it is added. If I want to remove something, so done. So it asks me for example if I remove number one. So it is re removed. If I write list again, so all the list is updated. Now in this case, the advantage is for example if I exit it. So next time when I you know run the program. So suppose I run the program again. So next time when I run the program, now if I list it, you see that, that that particular movie which we have removed, that is removed from the file as well. So that means the data is updated. In the case of list, when you were directly dealing with the list, next time when you run the program, it starts from those uh, movies again. That is, uh, it starts from the, uh, you know, the first, uh, the, the, the movies which you already had created, you know, the default movies. So that means if you are adding something, deleting something, the data was not being saved. So in this case, when you next time open the file, the data is, uh, you know, the updated data that you already had changed. Okay, next we have the CSV files. Uh, CSV stands for actually the comma separated values. Now these are used to save the values or store the values in tabular data forms, but in a text form. So uh, basically you have multiple columns and multiple rows 
where the columns are separated by commas and rows automatically go to the new rows in the text file so uh, you know it is similar to like you have what you have you know in excel data sheet so in an excel data sheet you have what you have the uh, rows and columns and then in a csv uh, what do you have you have the rows and columns are separated normally by a comma so that is called what that is called a csv file now generally they are separated by comma but you may separate the you know columns by a tab or by any other kind of a delimiter as well so uh, you probably would have encountered with csv files when using your phones as well so when you save your contacts uh, in a phone so you have your contact list if you want to export your contacts for example that's if you change your phone and you want to export your contacts into the new phone if you export all the contacts that is also a csv file where you have you know the the on in one row you have the details of one particular contact and in the next row you have the details of uh, the second contact one row may have the name of the person the phone number the address and maybe some other information all of that information will be separated by column uh, by commas where uh, you know each particular set of information separated by comma represents one particular column so whenever you have these kind of data so then you are al you always use what you always use csv file in a text file normally you have you have you know all the data uh, written sequentially in the form of a text but csv file as i said you have multiple rows and multiple columns so rows uh, can also be referred as one records columns are also you know referred as fields so uh, the csv module have two kind of uh, functions for writing writer the name of the file writer rows write rows and then you write down the rows so this is for you know uh, for uh, opening the writer mode of the file and this is for writing the rows inside the um, inside the csv file so let's see examples so suppose we have this list now this is a two dimensional list so it has three rows and each row represents one movie and each row has the name of the movie and the year it was released so each row has two columns the name which is what which is a string comma and then you have what you have the year here then you have the second list which is again the name and then you have the year here and similarly the other ones so to, to 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 save this data in a csv file you actually have to do what you have to import csv module so you first try to import csv then you open with open movies.csv so here the extension is csv in the right mode new line is equal to this now this we use it uh, when we want to use a csv files so different kind of operating system actually behave differently for csv files to, to so uh, uh, to deal with this kind of uh, you know difference between different operating system we actually append this line this will this line makes sure that whenever you apply any kind of commands on csv files so those command actually work similarly irrespective of the uh, operating system so that is why we actually have to add the new line here and uh, as file writer is equal to csv dot writer file so here we are telling that we actually want to write in this file which is csv file we are using the writer mode and this is the file object that we get then we can simply write down use this object writer dot write rows and we can write anything movies here movies was this so that means all of this data would be written inside this particular csv file now we have to use csv file because the data is in the form of uh, rows and columns so let us uh, try to execute it So first I have created this list, then I want to create this uh, file, so let me execute it, ok so we had to import the csv as well, I did not use that. So the command is executed, so now let us open this file the name of the file was okay, we have to see all the files movies.csv so this is movies.csv you can actually open it with uh, with uh, excel as well but i'll open it uh, with a notepad so you could see there that you know this is a csv file 
and all the data is written uh, you know in the form of rows first row and then the column name here the second column first row first column and second column second row first column second column so here the data is written in the form of uh, rows and columns so this is how you write the data in a csv file now to read the data from the csv file you can write on what you can write on reader uh, you can use the reader function with open movies.csv so by default it is read mode new line this always you have to write uh, down as file reader is equal to csv.reader file so now the object is reader for row in reader so now you are reading one particular line from the reader print row 0 so here it will print the first line here plus and then you add this now since uh, the second uh, uh, row of 1 so row of 0 is basically the first object of the list so here you are reading the lines in a list actually so here row is what row is a list so row of 0 would be the name of the movie then row of 1 would be what it will be the year in which it was released so this is an integer and this was um, a string so that is why we have written str here because we are using plus here if you use comma then you don't have to convert into string so then it will you know print all of this data so let us try to execute this okay so again I have to import the CSV module So you see the names have been read and they have been written and we have brackets here because when we printed so we had you know these brackets here so we wrote those as well okay you may have some optional arguments uh, which could be used uh, for the csv format and why do we actually need it now by default as i said generally what do we do we actually separate the contents uh, in a csv file by a comma so this is the first column comma second column so when you write down inside the file so this is how it looks like you have the first line here uh, where the columns are separated by comma now sometimes it may happen that your actual uh, you know text may contain comma here so for example if you have multi python and then you have a comma now here comma may not be for example representing what it may not be representing the uh, it may not be representing the uh, the column here the comma may be actually part of the actual string so in that case when you have you know the uh, separator also called as you know the the, the uh, which is your uh, delimiter which is the separator if your separator is part of your actual string then in that case the compiler might you know uh, make an error so if you have a comma the compiler might think that if you have a comma inside your actual data the compiler might think that your data is ending here and next column is starting where actually that particular comma is part of the same column so in that case you can actually use some of these optional arguments if you want to so for example you can write on quoting is equal to csv dot quote minimal so that means in that case if there is anything that has that particular delimiter for example if you are using comma as a delimiter so if there is a comma inside one particular uh, you know uh, one particular row uh, one particular column from uh, that you're reading from a list so it will automatically put all of that particular column in a in double quotes or quotes so that all of that is read as as one particular you know string rather than you know uh, two separate strings so for example let's suppose if you write on this particular command here which command code is equal to csv dot code minimal if you write this command then in that case what will happen so if even if you have for example comma here so when you it reads the you know the contents here so it it actually includes these double quotes as well so that means if there is a comma there that comma would be part of the strings so all of the data that is read here that data would be read as a whole string so when it reads here inside the file so this data will not be written like this it will have double quotes here so when you you know actually try to read it back again all of this including the comma which may be inside that will be actually read as one particular string uh, similarly you have some other optional arguments for example you can write down that quote char is equal to this so that means uh, 
you can actually um, double quotes if there are any double quotes so you can put those double code as uh, quotes as well so you can use this command so that double quotes are actually included uh, so, so, so double quotes uh, uh, are actually included and everything that uh, you have is actually inside the double quotes so here quotes are actually tells uh, that uh, all the uh, all the columns are actually inside double quotes so previously you saw that that uh, your column this column was in double quotes this was not in double quotes so if you write quote char and in single quotes you are specifying double quote here so that means you are telling the compiler that all the columns they are in double quotes so that means whenever you have this double quote that means this is the start of a column and whenever you have double quote again that is the end of a column in between if you have any special character any comma anything else that will be treated as part of that particular column so quote char is used to tell the compiler that how your columns are actually identified so here you are telling that the double code actually tells double code is used uh, for all the columns so all the columns are enclosed in double quotes now if you use quoting in quoting what it automatically does the compiler automatically does so anything which has any special character any particular uh, uh, column which has any special character that automatically is uh, you know quoted inside double quotes and anything that does not have that remains that as it is in quote char what do you do all the columns are automatically done what they are basically in double quotes when it writes a uh, delimiter is used to tell the compiler that how to actually you know separate the values when you actually write the data inside a file so for example look, we have example here writer is equal to csv dot writer file so here we are specifying that your delimiter is actually slash t so that means all the values are separated by a tab instead of a comma and similarly when you read as well so you have to tell the compiler that what is your delimiter that uh, whenever there will be a tab the compiler would know that now the data for the next particular column is uh, starting so in this case even if you have what if you have even if you have a comma inside a column that will be read as one particular part of a column why because the compiler would know that only a tab identifies the start of next column so if there is no tab all the data that you are reading it may contain any characters any special characters that will be part of the same column now let's see the, an example for a csv file so we have the same movie list program now this is two dimensional so uh, now we have the movie name and also the year as well so let us try to see so we have the same kind of commands menu we have list and then we have the add and then we have the list again and then we have the del del command so let us try to see so this is the program so first we'll go to the main function so this is the main function here so display menu first you're displaying the menu then you read movies so again similar kind of syntax first you read all the movies uh, in your movies uh, list so let's go to the read movies so this is read movies so first you have empty list then you open the file uh, name so here file name is actually a csv file so you are opening the file then uh, you are creating the reader object here then you are uh, reading from the reader you are simply pending it to the row and then you are returning the movies so this is read movies so after that you have the same command so first list so let us go to the list so list simply would list all the movies so again same uh, the syntax that you have the only thing is that now you have the uh, data that you read it will be in the form of a it will be in the form of uh, uh, it will be in the uh, it will have two actually you know values inside a list every time you read uh, you know a list of a list so then you can have to separately print both of these so let's suppose first you read the first line of your list and you put that into movie so movie is now a list which has two columns so first you write down the number here then movie 0 which is the name of the movie movie 1 which is what which is the second column that is your uh, year and then the loop would run for the second time and third time as well so this way you can simply list all the movies then you have the the uh, okay then you have the add movie command so let's go to the add movie okay where is add movie this is add movie so you get the name first you get the year you create an empty list you append both of these then you add this list to the list of lists which is your movies then you write down write movies you back you write it back to your file and also print 
so let's go to write movies because every time you add movie or you delete a movie you have to write back to the file so let's go to the write movie so where is write movie so this is your write movies so it opens the file in the write mode csv dot writer and simply write drones write zone all the uh, list back to back to your file now let us try to similarly for delete delete it asks for the index it removes that particular movie and then it writes back the movies back to your uh, file again and then it prints that this movie has been deleted so i'm not gonna gonna execute this program so you can do it on your own so because it is quite similar to what we did for you know previously for the for the text file as well so just in this case in this particular case we have what we have uh, two columns okay, next we have the binary files uh, we are only going to go do a you know some uh, not a detailed introduction of the binary files uh, uh, so it is quite similar to the you know the, the operations are quite similar to csv and text files so you can do on your own so why do we use binary file i already have you know told you that binary file not only stores the textual data it could be used for storing any form of data so binary to, to deal with binary files you have to use a module which is called pickle module the pickle module provides us two methods dump and uh, load so dump is used to write data and load is used to load, read data from the file so writing data to binary file it is also known as pickling or serializing and similarly reading is also called unpickling or deserializing so if you hear a term that you are pickling then that means uh, you are actually writing the data in a binary file and if you are unpickling that means you are actually reading the data similarly if you if you hear this word that you are serializing the binary file that means you are writing the data to a file or deserializing means that you are reading the data from the file now in the case of text files you cannot write integer data you have to convert that into a string data in the case of csv files uh, we saw an example uh, you know for example we were writing uh, the, the year here so you the year here was actually integer so you were able to write integer in the case of csv file you can actually write the integers into the file but those integers are saved as strings that is saved as a text it is not saved as a as integer itself but in the case of uh, binary files so when you actually uh, save the data when you actually save the data uh, then in that case uh, when you actually save the data you have to uh, that that data is saved in the form of integer so when you read the data back again those integer if you want to append with a string so you have to convert that into a string you cannot directly use for example plus to add a data integer data that is read from a binary file uh, directly to a string using what using the plus operator you will have to convert that into what into a string now in the case of uh, in the case of uh, csv files so when we were actually writing for example we write movie one here the name of the movie was what it was not a string it was integer so it was integer but we use plus here but we did not convert into string because csv automatically converts all the integer data into string in the text in the case of text file you yourself convert in the case of csv file it automatically converts in the case of binary file no data is converted into text if it is integer data it is actually remains as integer data now we have two methods for the pickle module we have the dump method dump method is used to write the object inside a file the load method it is used to load the data from the file so let's see the examples so suppose we have this list movie list first you have to import the pickle module then you can write down with open movies dot bin so here it is binary file so you have to write dot bin wb write but this is binary file as file pickle dot dump movies file so that means you are dumping the data inside the file so let us try to execute it so i can import the pickle module here and then i can write down the data so let us try to execute it so 
it worked what was the name of the file i think it was movies.bin so movies.bin so let me open it in uh, uh, in text mode so if i open it as a notepad file so you see this is the data that i get so it has some header information the name of the movie then gr is converted into some garbage data then the name here so this is what we saw you know initially as well so if you write in the you know in binary form so this is how you actually you know uh, see the data in the binary form okay so you can actually uh, read the data from the file as well using what uh, using uh, the uh, you know load function so for example here you can open the movies uh, dot bin file in the read mode and then uh, you can you know use pickle dot load to to actually read all the contents in this particular uh, list and then you can you know uh, print that list so let us try to do it now i already have written so i'll simply you know remove all this i have to use the um, import pickle because i'm using the pickle module so if i run it you see here that it reads all the contents and uh, you know the data is written in this form so you could see that uh, the data when we actually saw it in a text form so it had some other kind of information but when we actually read it so all the information is actually there in the in the actual file now we can actually do the movie list program for binary file as well so we already have done for text file and csv file for binary file we can do similarly so some of the program is done so for for example the code for uh, uh, we already have the code for listing the movies for reading the movies and for writing the movies the rest of the code you can do on your own uh, for example you have to de do the code for uh, you know for the main function and also for reading the contents from the file initially uh, that you have to do you can actually use the read movies uh, function that we already have defined so you can do that there is no delete uh, function here so you can you know uh, develop on your own the delete function as well so this you can do on your own so this is it for today so today we have discussed uh, how can we actually write down the data uh, that we are dealing with while you know doing our code back to the files so we discussed three kind of files we discussed text files csv files and binary files the text files and csv files they deal with textual data the binary files it deals with textual and you know integers and floats and images and other forms of data as well uh, the text file simply stores all the data in the form of a text the csv file stores the data in the form of rows and columns separated by comma or some other kind of delimiter so whenever you have multi dimensional data with rows and columns you always use csv file which is a very popular file and then you can also save the data into the binary file uh, for uh, csv file we have to use uh, import the csv module and for binary file we have to uh, import the pickle modules so this actually gives us the advantage that when you are dealing with data you can write the data back to the file and later on when you you know uh, when you come back to your program and want to do it again so all the data that you you actually worked on previously that would be saved in the file so it will already be there and you can start working from there so I hope, I hope everything is clear so if you have any questions you can ask me question during the class session so thank you very much